was how the instrument was designed, and that was what it was intended to do. The chord bars used to be up here, and you sat with it in front of you, and you strummed it to play, and that was what you did with it. You didn't do all this wiggy diggy stuff like people do now. It was a parlor instrument that they foisted off on the people or the traveling salesmen and sort of like that. And they sold them in Sears and Roebuck for two dollars and a half a piece. <laughs> Tell them about the sound hole on your first harp. <laughs> the first harp I made, the sound hole was like this. You know, the flowers like that. And I took it down to Mary Lou and Ivan, and I handed it to them, there's my first one. I said, like, why did you put the flower like that? I said, well, what's the matter with the flower like that? You play like this, and you want the... No, no, he says, you put it up here, and you want the flower like that. So the only one to have the flower this way is number one. And when we had another one we did with Ivan, I decided at some point that maybe people would be interested in a kit. And I worked up a whole set of design, full-scale drawings and everything else on a kit. And then we had to figure out if the average person would be able to uh, figure out how to do that, how to build it. So my wife and I sat there, and we were looking at Ivan. I'm not saying a word, and I was like, why are you looking at me? I said, we're looking for the dumbest, most unable person we can think of to prove that it could be built for the kid. <laughs> and he did. And he still very proudly plays that instrument for his concert. It's made out of marine plywood. It has a dangerously good sound. Uh, we published all of that in the Old Hawk Quarterly Magazine, and I know there are hundreds of people who have homemade an Old Hawk with that set of plates. Marine plywood happens to make a pretty good sound, even though the idea of plywood is.